There's a lot of excitement around the recent open beta release of Daggerheart, though that excitement is matched with criticism. But ultimately, the question that needs to be asked is whether or not Daggerheart is right for your table. The other folks are all here. We're going to talk a little bit about Daggerheart and some of the main problems concerning its design. On March 12, the open beta for Daggerheart released. You can go play it right now. You can create characters, you can run a game. And the entire package was incredibly cohesive. I am thoroughly impressed by the amount of time, effort, and attention to detail that went into this particular beta. Right at the top, Daggerheart tries to tell you exactly what kind of game it's meant to be. 2d12, hope and fear, and a lot of burden on the GM to make it all make sense narratively. Unfortunately, what is required to play this style of game well is a table full of people who are working toward the same goal. That being, everybody's trying to communicate, have fun, and make up a story as they go. It is a very narrative-focused game, despite having a rule structure attached to it. Now, this is not unusual for folks who have played Powered by the Apocalypse systems. However, that is not the audience that Critical Role has cultivated. The first foray into the tabletop role-playing game space has been Dungeons & Dragons for a lot of people. Because of that, they're used to the thing that they're used to. In fact, a lot of people don't even know that TTRPGs uh, aren't just Dungeons & Dragons, believe it or not. And because of that, it's a little bit of a hard pill to swallow, but the game might not be for your table. And people don't like to hear that. They enjoy Critical Role. They're really excited about what they're making. And at the same time, might not work out. The more rigid structure of Dungeons & Dragons is what helps curtail some of the drawbacks of playing with various types of people. Not everybody's going to be on the same page. Even in your session zero, you will know that there's going to be some personalities that don't necessarily jive, but they're close enough. Because finding a perfect table is very, very difficult to do. And that's one of the main complaints about Daggerheart, is that you need players who are all in the same headspace. You need ways to keep the rowdy players in line. You need ways to make sure that everybody has a chance to speak up and have their turn. And in a game like Daggerheart, which is very fluid, very narratively driven, you won't always get that. But there's more. If you have players at your table who aren't always playing in the spirit of the game, Daggerheart is very easy to break. Because there is an exchange of resources, hope or fear, to either the GM or the players, it is very easy to make checks just to build up resources or uh, the other way around, hoard resources on the GM side and then just take a dump on your players. Ideally, neither of these things happen because everyone is moving the same direction, but it requires a table who is on board with the fiction that's trying to be created. And again, it's not every table. Sometimes we're just sitting next to somebody that we don't really like to play with, but kind of have to because they're good enough. Finding enough players to play a game is already enough of a challenge. Find players who all jive well and are compassionate, understanding, well-meaning human beings, way more rare. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. And if you're interested in a D20 alternative that might jive with your table a little bit more than Dagger Heart will, check out Distal, which is currently on Backerkit and is in alpha development, but still totally playable and totally free. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.